Hi, and welcome back to Programming with Pax. In today's video, we're going to talk about Visual Studio Code, or VS Code. VS Code is a fantastic free code editor, or the place that you'll write all of your code. I'll start off by giving a quick walkthrough on how to download it and set everything up. And then after that, we're going to go over a whole bunch of my favorite plugins or extensions that help with both productivity and workflow. I'll leave a list of timestamps down below so you can skip to the parts that interest you the most. Let's get started. All right, first to download VS Code, you're going to visit code.visualstudio.com and you'll select your operating system and follow the installation steps. Once you launch VS Code, it's going to look a little like this. I'm going to zoom in just to make it a little bit easier to see, uh, especially if you're on mobile devices. We're going to go over three different things uh, to start. So there's navigation, settings, and shortcuts. So for navigation, we've got the Explorer. This is uh, where all of your files in a project will be listed. Um, after that, we've got search. So this allows you to search for keywords throughout your project files, as well as find and replace functionality. Next, you have source control. Uh, this allows you to integrate Git. Uh, Git is a version control technology that allows you to save your app at a specific point and revert back if necessary. Next, we have debug. So Visual Studio Code has some really awesome tooling to help you debug those uh, really tricky and difficult to track down issues. I'll be making an entire video exploring debugging in the future. And finally, we have extensions. So all of the plugins that help with either the aesthetics of the, uh, of the code editor or quality of life, um, productivity improvements. There's tons and tons of them out there. Um, and we're going to go over a bunch of really great ones uh, in a moment. So after this, then we have settings at the bottom. I'm just going to get rid of that. Settings. So in the settings we, uh, cog at the bottom left, you're going to have um, things like your settings, extensions, uh, your keyboard shortcuts, different themes. Um, it's a, it's a go-to place for, for anything settings related. Um, so within settings, there are a couple things that I like to change when I have a fresh installation of VS code. So one of them is, where am I? <laughs> one of them is changing the font size. Personally, I like having 14. Um, that's just personal preference. And another thing that I really like is word wrap. So word wrap, just a little bit further down. Uh, when you have this on, if you have a, a single line that goes really, really long, rather than going off of the off of the page and out of, off the window so you can't see it, when it gets to the edge of the of the uh, of the document, it's actually going to wrap around and start at the bottom. Um, just kind of helps with with readability, I find. So now that that is set, I'm going to open up a uh, test project that I made, which will just help um, show all of the features and extensions just a little bit, a little bit better. So in here, we've got all of this. All right. Now that we are in the test project, the last thing I want to talk about before we get into extensions is shortcuts. So in the description down below, I'm going to leave two links. And they are cheat sheets to VS Code's shortcuts. So one will be for Windows, and the other is going to be for Mac. Now, for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to say what the Mac equivalent is, but it'll be really easy to find what the Windows equivalent is with those cheat sheets. So the first one I want to talk about is the Command Palette. It's one of the most important shortcuts, and it is Command-Shift-P. And it brings up this. Um, so this is really a search bar that allows you to do just about anything from it, including making a new file or working with Git or adjusting your settings. It has really, really awesome autocomplete. So you'll only need to type a few letters before uh, it'll start giving suggestions. So let's say new file or 
um, settings. And so you can go through either the UI or, or the JSON, uh, or you can initialize a Git repository. Uh, everything, pretty much everything you can think of can be done through the command palette. Similar to the command palette, which was again, command shift P, if you just do command P, now you're gonna be looking for files specifically. So rather than, uh, in this case, it's easy just to simply find each file, but imagine if you were in a large project and, and there's folders with, you know, with files within all of those, it'd be a lot harder to, and, and a lot more time consuming to have to click through each folder. So instead of that, you can just do command P, to bring up files and you know, let's do style CSS. So it's just a really fast, uh, easy way of doing it without you having to lift your hands off of the keyboard. The next shortcut I wanna show you is find next usage. So if I go into this HTML file, let's say if I wanna select all four of these divs here, so I could double click on this div, which selects it. And now if I press command D, it's going to select the next one while also putting the caret, the, uh, allowing me to, to edit it at the same time. And if I press Command D again and again, it's gonna have all four of these selected. And all I would have to do then is, let's say, change it to an H1. So I can do that. And now all of them have changed. So it's just a really handy shortcut for grabbing the next of. After that, a really handy one is duplicating. So if you want to duplicate an entire line, either up or down, you can press Option, Shift, and Up or Down arrow. So Option, Shift, Down is going to duplicate the line downwards. And I can do it again and again and again. Same thing. So if I go to this line and I want to duplicate it up, there you go. So super, super handy for duplicating lines. After that, if I wanted to move a line, similar kind of key shortcut. So it's actually just, uh, it's just option and up and down. Uh, so that allows me to move lines. So these are just some of the most common shortcuts that I use, uh, and I find them to be huge time savers, and I just thought you should know. If you're wanting to customize these shortcuts, you can go to the uh, settings cog at the bottom, scroll down to keyboard shortcuts, and then within there, you can change them to whatever you want to be. One that I find really helpful, uh, and I do it, I always have this changed, is the save all. So by default within VS Code, let's say if you have multiple files open and you've changed them all, the save button, which is Command S, will only save the file that you currently have open. But to me, that's kind of annoying because then I'd have to click on all these different files and save them one by one. So rather than having this as the save, I change the save all to be Command S. So double click and Command S. And enter. And now we're good. So that's a quick introduction on VS Code. Now for the good stuff, the extensions. So I have broken this list into two categories, uh, aesthetics, and productivity. We're gonna start with the extensions that are more about the aesthetics of the code editor. So again, to go to extensions, you just go to the extensions tab. And the first one we're gonna look at is called VS Code Icons. This is the one. So for you, you'll just have to click the download or in, sorry, the install button and, uh, and it'll set up everything. Once installed, it'll show the icons of each file type on the Explorer tab. And I find it just very nice to be able to quickly see the icon for the file type. So for example, CSS icon for CSS files, JS for JS, TS for TypeScript, etc. If you don't immediately see the change in icons, then you can Command Shift P for the command palette, and you'll go to File Icon Theme, and from there, you can change them around completely. Um, so I believe the SETI is the default for VS Code, and I guess I'm just a sucker for the VS Code icons one. Up next, we have CSS Peak by Pranay Prakash. So what it allows you to do is to peak your CSS definitions from within your HTML files. So if I go to my index.html file here, 
and I hold command or control on PC and I hover over the class here, it's going to give me a little preview of what styles this some class uh, class contains. And really, it's just a nice shortcut, which prevents you from having to go back and forth from, from file to file. Next, we have Bracket Pair Colorizer by Cohenrad. It allows you to see which opening bracket matches with which closing bracket, and it also gives you this line on the side. So if I select this inner function here, you can see that this, this opening bracket is paired with this closing bracket. It really just helps with readability, and it also helps you identify if you have an extra bracket anywhere because things will not match up then, and you can just track it down a little easier. You can see now that this, this yellow is actually for this one here, and it outlines it as well. Super handy. And now on to the productivity extensions. The first one we're going to talk about is Prettier by Prettier. Prettier is an opinionated code formatter. So let's say if you had your code all over the place and you had a space here and a couple lines there, and then this one is down here, and this is way over here, as soon as you save, everything is just going to clip back into place of where it should be. So this is prettier in action right here. It's a big time saver rather than, you know, let's say if this line was there, then I have to actually manually put everything where I think it should be. So with prettier, it'll just snap everything into place on save. To get it to work, you simply go down to the settings cog, settings, text editor, formatting, and you'll want to have this format on save checked. Another way of doing it is by using the command palette and typing in settings JSON. And within there, you can add editor.formatonsave. And also, you'll be adding all of your uh, options for prettier within here as well. So one that I like to add is single quote being true. So what this would do is, let's say if in this function here, I had double quotes, as soon as I save, it's going to convert them to single quotes. It's just a personal preference, but that's what I do. Up next, we have auto rename tag by Jun Han. So it is a simple extension which helps keep your tags in order. If you change the opening tag, the closing tag will automatically change as well. So if I change this div to an h1, you can automatic you can see that automatically the closing tag changes. And you can do it the other way around as well. So if I change this closing div to an h2, magically the opening tag becomes an h2 as well. One of my favorite extensions and I think it's mandatory is live server by Ritwick Day. So live server will allow you to run a local server with live reload on it. So what this means is if you right click on your index.html and open with live server, it will now create a local server for you, which is running it. And also for live reload, if I were to change something, let's say if I change the CSS from this yellow to red, as soon as I save and go back, it's already updated and reloaded. So super nice to uh, work in this sort of environment. When you're finished with the local environment, all you have to do is click on this button here, the port 5500, and it will dispose of the server. And similarly, you could actually start the server by doing that as well. So if I click on that, it goes up and we're back. Same thing. Another extension I love is Live SAS Compiler, also by Ritwick Day. So I'm guessing this guy is just Robocop at coding. Um, so what it allows you to do is convert your SAS files or your .scss files down to regular CSS. And it'll watch those files for any changes and update it accordingly. So all you have to do for that is at the bottom, there's now watch SAS. If you click on that, then your CSS file, or sorry, your SCSS file, now becomes a regular CSS file. And any changes you make in here, 
let's say I add a padding. No, that's already done. A color of red. As soon as I save, now in the CSS file, there's also the same thing. So super handy. And when you're done with it, just simply click on the watching button here and it'll now not watch. Up next, we have an extension called Emmet. So in other code editors, you'd usually have to download it as an extension. However, within VS Code, it's there automatically. What Emmet does is it helps create CSS and HTML tags using shortcuts. So not only simple things like, let's say if I want an H3, which you can see the Emmet abbreviation here, and then I would just hit tab and it would give me a pair of H3 tags. But I can also do more advanced things like an unordered list with three list items. Uh, and in, within each of those, there's a span with a class name of, I don't know, interesting class name. And I can just hit enter on that and it gives everything necessary. And within the CSS file, I can do shortcuts like DN for display none, or I could do M10 for margin of 10 pixels, P10, etc. So it's just a whole bunch of shortcuts that allows you to uh, type up HTML and CSS much faster. And finally, we have the extension called REST Client by Hua Chao Mayo. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that even remotely correctly. And what it allows you to do is test your API endpoints uh, in a similar way that Postman does, if you've ever used that tool before. So you can either use get or post, and you'll be able to see the response. Uh, it supports both .http and also .rest file types. So if I'm in this HTTP and I have a get request to JSON placeholder, which is a fake online REST API, which allows you to test your calls and you'll get dummy data responses. With the extension installed, I now have the send request. So I just simply click on it and I'll get a request from the server. And so I can actually get all this dummy data back just to, just to test the endpoint. It's really, really handy. All right, guys, that's it for today. As you can see, VS Code is super powerful. I use it every day and absolutely love it. If you did find this video helpful, consider dropping a like or sharing it with a friend. It really helps the channel out. And subscribe for more content just like this. Thank you very much for your time. I hope you're having a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.